Okay, so this video we're going over Headless Herschel and we're going over Skeleton Steve. Now these are two Halloween um, tunes. Now we're going over why I think they are good or bad in their respective areas. And do I think they're going to be very impactful in the meta now? And do I think they're going to be impactful later on in the meta um, as time goes on? And will they really hold their value? Because when it comes to promo tunes, you really want to know, are they going to hold their value later on down the road? Because if not, it's very expensive for a very short term um, advantage so we'll be going over that so first of all headless social pretty cool character the artwork absolutely fucking phenomenal you cannot you know doubt it. it is amazing so here's the main thing with Herschel. main thing is he's got normalized on, kit, on his kit right and it's not like lydia it's guaranteed normalized so the first mythic was normalized and it, you know that's a pretty big selling point for a lot of people because you know if they were to release a normalize um in the world people go nuts over it because normalize is the most op thing in the game easily so What's this leader skill? All fast and alert teammates get 30% attack up to one enemy gets normalized for two turns. Now, here's my opinion on the leader skill. Um, it's not rainbow, which automatically makes it very niche on its use, but he does have normalized to one person for two turns. Now, it is random. You can't pick or choose. It is completely fucking random, and it's just one normalized. One normalized, that's it. So, based on that, it's... It's not great. It, honestly, normalized to one uh, enemy is just it's just very meh. It is very meh. Like one person is random. It's you know you got five tunes on that team. It's not that great. It's really not as OP as people think. Now, if you could control where that goes, then yes, it would be OP. But since it's completely random, it's not really a big selling point. Now, the also another thing is like I said before, it's not rainbow lead. You only have fast and alert, so you limit it to yellows and reds, which I mean. There's really good yellows and reds out here. We're going to get a lorry soon as well. So definitely some options there. But, you know, it's not rainbow lead. So overall, his leader skill, it's okay. It's okay. It's not crazy. Um, it's basically all I see on there is all faster than alerts get 30% attack. And I see one one tune gets normalized. I'm just like, Ugh. it's not it's not very appealing. So we'll go on to his um, adrenaline rush. Don't lose your head. Obviously, his, his character looks fucking sick. Do two attacks of two fifty percent damage, five hundred percent total to a single enemy. That enemy and up to two others get cross out for two turns. Now that is absolutely awesome. So first of all, two attacks plus that with the um, the double attack weapon we got in the league store. That's gonna be great. Um, you know, two other teammates get cross hairs. That's pretty good as well, considering. Um, you know, revise can be a pain in the fucking ass. So, I uh, automatically, you know, I'm thinking the drop, the adrenaline rush is pretty fucking good. Lots of um, killing potential there, especially when he's a yellow. So, obviously, yellows um, very good against blues. We got Cliff, we got Davy, we got um, Uncle Sam. You got loads of these meta blues on defense, and you know he's gonna really help kill them. Um, and very fast at doing so. Now, going on to his active skill. Uh, it's a turn one, which is pretty interesting. Attack one enemy for 200% damage, up to three teammates recover from bleed. So it's sort of a Zachary counter, but um, yeah, it's basically a Zachary counter. You know, you have to run bleed resist with that guy on there. You know, maybe you want to run like two or three bleed resist, but yeah, that, that covers it. It's, it's pretty fucking nice. So based off that, I'm just, I'm just going to compare him to Lydia. He's basically a very expensive Lydia. Now, here's my thing, right? It's, it's a very expensive Lydia. Now, is he better than Lydia? Yeah. Yes, he is better than Lydia. But the difference between a Lydia and a Herschel is a couple hundred dollars in pools. Now, Lydia is still doing absolute wonders for loads of people in the game. But And I'm sure Herschel running two, basically two Lydias on attack is going to be fucking phenomenal for some people. But it's all money versus value sort of thing. Do you have lots of, you know, spare income to spare? Would you not mind pulling on him? Then, yeah, go for it. But if you're a light spender, you don't really spend, maybe you pull one tune a month sort of thing. I would think very, very heavily before you pull him because he is just a better Lydia in my opinion. Now, yeah, he is a better Lydia. Like, but it's, it's just a money conversion thing. So I'm just going to say that. If you got the money, sure, he might be worth it. If you're the sort of person that pulls once a month, maybe wait until the end of his rotation to see what comes next and then decide. But... Uh, that's my opinion on that. So I, I, I didn't mention the mythic ability, so I'll go into that as well. Um, agility can go up to 20% basic attack. Um, the Knights of Soul, 80% increased damage against fast targets, and that is awesome as well. You can get rid of your Negans, wouldn't recommend rushing into him, but 
you know, his basic hits are going to hit like fucking, sh- like, oh my fuck, they're going to hit really fucking hard. Um, you know, and any of the yellows, like, um, Taras and whatnot, yeah, he's going to hit extremely fucking hard. Uh, frightening focus when this character starts at a turn, 100% chance that this character gets focused for one turn. So basically, Mirabelle's, um, you know, Connors, anything that can re-control, she, like, he's immune to it. It's, it's pretty fucking sweet. Um, when attacking a target with tough trait, that target also gets 50% heal reduction for one turn. So, basically, he's a blue killing machine, and he also kills red, no, um, yellows very easily. So, overall, like I said before, he's just a very, very, he's, he's better than Lydia, but for the price tag, I don't know if he's worth pulling, and like I said, that leader skill is random as fuck. It, it says normalize in there, but you got to remember that normalize is random as fuck. It could go on the leader skill, and what's that going to do to the leader, you know? If it went on to a Davy, if it went on to the Human Shield Sam, then it's doing something. If it goes on to a Bodyguard, hell, it's doing something. But if it goes on to a leader skill, then you're a bit fucked, you know what I mean? So, with that being said, you know, pull at your own discretion, but I would heavily advise you wait until you see what the next tune is, because I don't think he is going to be very... Like I said, I think he's good, but I don't think he's going to be meta-meta relevant compared to what could come in the future. So I would say, personally, if you got a spare income, you know, consider pulling. But if, you, if you're if you a sort of person that pulls once a month, um, yeah, I, I, I really would give it a pass. Because, honestly, he's not OP-OP. He's just another alternative to use on attack. Now, going on to Headless Steve. No, sorry, not Headless Steve. Skeleton Steve. First of all, he, I don't think he looks as cool as um Herschel, but... You know, his gun looks fucking sick, you know, I'm loving the skeleton stuff, you know, he's a grim reaper, got the scythe and all. Um, really upset he's not a green or a yellow, because um, I'd love to have that scythe as a weapon, unfortunately, yeah, so I think that was a missed opportunity. Now, he is a bide tune, now, if you if you play against Morgan, you know he's a pain in the fucking asshole, um, especially if you've got a multi-attacker, or your one attack just doesn't kill it, it your belly damage just goes fucking mental, so bide insane already. Um, Peekaboo is an adrenaline rush, deal 400% damage to one enemy, up to three um, enemies get disarm, and 30% minus attack for two turns. Now that's a bit of a double S shield, depending if you want to use it on attack. If you use that on attack, uh, people could be using disarm, uh, defense while disarm, so that's sort of like a double S shield, but he's a bide, so obviously you're thinking more of a defensive build. Obviously, because that bide can go nuts. Then we got his adrenaline rush. No, sorry, his um active skill. And now his active skill is very, very fucking interesting. So first of all, I just want to mention you can get two of these thieves for free. Um, no, I think you can get two or three for free. But to get the limit break two, you gotta spend twenty dollars like normal with the Ico, um, the cow, and all that shit. It's pretty standard practice. Um, but here's his active skill. Um, taunt one enemy for three turns. All adjacent teammates get camouflage for. Th- two turns now that is fucking nuts if you place him properly on your team um with um a payback um a human shield or whatnot that could get that could be really fucking good so the taunt for one turn for three to taunt one enemy for three turns it's, it's okay it's okay but that camouflage is gonna be fucking nuts at a turn one um for turn one but my problem is i wouldn't rely on that being active all the time because there are so many control tunes in the game, or there's so many ways to stop someone from using their active skill turn one, that you're going to have to be very picky with how you want to do it. Because he has a red, so if you put him down Tara, he's going to be susceptible to bleed and burn. Um, and also, you've got Mirabelle with Confuse, you've got uh, Connor with Taunt, you've got Diamond with her, I don't know what you call it, Headcracker, which gives days. Um, you know, they, there's a lot of counters to turn one rushes. No, sorry, not turn one rushes, turn one active, so be very careful with that. But keep in mind, he is bide, so whenever you hit into him, um, that damage is going to get splashed back at them. Now, here is the nutty things with him. He is very, very good, in my opinion, for 40% critical hit resistance, which is nuts. Especially with that bide, it's going to go nutty. Healthy frame at the start of each turn when it, um, this character is below 50% HP. Heal this character by 40% of their max HP. Meaning he's healing on his own. Which is amazing when he's below 50% health. And with Bide, nutty. Um, strong bones. Incoming tough to damage against this character. Has his multiplier reduced by 80 fucking percent. And he is red. 80% of blue damage going into him is getting reduced. And if you, you're probably running defense versus blue as well on his mod set. So he's going to take fuck all damage from blues, which is his main weakness, which is absolutely insane. Plus, with the 40% critical hit resistance, he is nuts as fuck with what you can do with them. So my recommendations are probably mod against bleed and burn, um, just because he's more than happy to sit there and soak up the damage because his um, 
ability by it's going to slap them all back and his last one is when being attacked 30% chance to um, one enemy gets confused for two turns, and that is called Bone to Pick, which is absolutely fucking insane. Because you've got to hit into him to kill. Um, maybe you got a double attack, and maybe you throw a mirror barrel into him, trying to get that trait damage in. Maybe you want to go with um, a Lydia hitting into him. You know, any of these multi attackers, when they're hitting multiple times into him, a 30% chance they're going to get confused can be devastating to the enemy team. So, I heavily recommend everyone gets a Skeleton Steve, because I do think. Going forward into the meta, he's going to be a meta defense tune. And with tunes coming out left and right, sooner or later, he's going to get a really nutty combo going with him. And plus the fact that he can heal, con um, control, and his survivability is all there. Yeah, definitely recommend everyone go hard for this Steve. Um, and I would recommend paying the extra $20 for the um, for the ability to get a limb break too. Because he is a very, very sexy character. Which should be a very meta defense tune going forward, in my opinion. So, I hope you like these reviews I'm doing. Um, I do understand people want me to do war, and I do want to do them again going forward. But it's to the point where I've got to be very careful with how I do them. Because I don't want people just blatantly just copying my teams with no effort involved. So, going forward, I will consider doing war streams um, and war videos again. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to have to be a little bit more cautious with how I do them. Just so, um, you know, I'm not giving people... Like, if I've got something better than someone else, they're not going to get a free, you know, copy and paste out of it. You know what I mean? But that being said, I will be doing some more interesting videos. Not just character reviews, because I know they can be a bit boring and uninteresting. No, not... Uh, I'm not going to do just pool videos either, because I know that can be a little bit dull for some people. I'll be doing some more unique, interesting videos that will definitely um, spice up the content, if you will. So, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Discord link in the description below. If you want a chance to win Discord Nitro, there's a competition going on in my Discord. Read the Discord um, rules, and you'll pretty much, you know, know how to participate. you got about, I don't know, like, under a week left on it. So, if you want to participate in that, you know... That's cool. If you don't, hey, free country. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, boys. Another video next week. And, uh, yeah, peace.